topic is current trends in bipolar disorder. What I felt that we need realignment in our understanding of the disease. When we were a student, we were given the impression that uh, bipolar is somehow a milder kind of disease and if you are giving a diagnosis of uh, bipolar, possibly you are diagnosing a milder disease compared to schizophrenia and other severe illness. But seeing the personal burden and economic burden of the illness, uh, the quality of life uh, of bipolar is not any easier than that of schizophrenia. And so now the impression is that we are dealing with really a serious illness which can have serious consequences. Then uh, bipolar disorder has a lot of comorbidity, comorbidities, which could be psychiatric, which could be uh, non-psychiatric, and they need to be considered uh, when we are dealing with uh, bipolar. Then uh, need for early intervention. Early intervention reduces high morbidity and mortality and there is evidence for checking progressive neurodegeneration de uh, in bipolar. Uday was talking of Akiskal. So using Akiskal's spectrum concept of bipolar disorder, lifetime prevalence of bipolar 1 is 0.5 to 1.6 percent, bipolar 2 is 1.5 to 2.5 percent, and if you take full spectrum into consideration, 4 to 12 percent of people uh, suffer to uh, some extent uh, of bipolar illness. Bipolar disorder starts earlier than we thought. For uh, prevalence, ta, ita ki, uh, for last 30 years, aki achhe na ki kichu bade chhe. Na amra jo hoon bade chila. Prevalence hoto change hoye chhe. Prevalence hoto change hoye chhe. Kito as of now, ita uh, jeta bola hoye Prevalence to uh, psychiatric illness er in general bola hai jee ek tu baad chhe. Ho tate uh, bipolar bodha equally important. Karon bipolarity the. A bipolar illness is that nurture is also equally important. Mane sudu nature, mane sudu biological illness no Stress induced by a bipolar illness uh, is known, and stress is supposed to be increasing. That is prevalent. So to bad che. Kintu study. Bipolar one tak kore bari ni. Karon bipolar one tak one Bipolar one tak to hard kore. Schizophrenia is more important than schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is more important than schizophrenia. Biology is more important. It's a biological illness. I mean, subsequent slide, how important is biology in this case. Other aspect, the stress is also important, and that may be playing a role. next The incidence of diagnosis of bipolar in childhood is growing dramatically. The childhood not only it was not identified, but childhood uh, bipolar is definitely increased. Uh, Time director say uh, issue chilo dedicated to the increasing incidence of bipolarity. Then coming to gender issue, keeping women less vulnerable during pregnancy and postpartum period is still a major concern. Treatment guidelines for pregnancy, postpartum, and breastfeeding women is still preliminary. Only difficulties are say in this age group. Right from uh, women, I mean, girls of younger age, when you start, at Amra Khub indiscriminately, you start using valproid, divalproid. That itself, infertile. 
polycystic kidney and some other body. So you need to be cautious when you are dealing with women of childbearing age. Uh, you you must have everything uh, at the back of your mind so that you don't mismanage the person. Then etiology. This is an important study which attracted my attention. Uh, is a premature birth. Premature birth prevalence study. 32 week birth, more than a million from Swedish birth register. Affective disorder was seven times more common in premature babies. 32 weeks said, Joto Bacha, one million Tamil study para hoche, and it is seven times, which is, which is a hopping number. Hence, you need to take that into consideration. Then coming to stress induced bipolar disorder that I was talking of. People with certain genetic profile may have an increased risk of developing bipolar disorder after experiencing stressful life events such as death of loved one, divorce or job loss. Then heritability of chronic disorders. A list I like uh, you to go through. Uh, like we know that uh, coronary heart disease is a heritable disease. My father got at 50, I got at 51. So but I know that it's a heritable disease. So, but the heritability is 0.57. Diabetes is a heritable disease where you have 0.6, uh, type 2 diabetes is 0.6 more. Whereas, the diseases that we deal with are actually more heritable, like bipolar disorder is 0.85, schizophrenia is 0.81, Alzheimer's disease is 0.74. So they constitute uh, among the most heritable diseases. Means, uh, why people say that psychiatric illnesses are heritable, you can uh, make out for this. And of all these, bipolar has the highest heritability. So you can't say that it's not biological. It is totally biological illness that we are dealing with. Now coming to one interesting thing that differential diagnosis versus comorbidity in bipolarity may be sometimes uh, problematic, like adult aging, ADHD. This may be a differential diagnosis and this may be a comorbidity, both may be together. Then drug-induced psychosis. The bipolar people are most susceptible to drug abuse and uh, psychosis could be partly due to cannabis, partly due to um, LSD, any other uh, which are psychotic, psychotogenic. Then borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. They can coexist, they can be differential diagnosis. Now before I go to the uh, medical management, I mean the um, uh, drug management, I like to touch upon psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, whether structured or unstructured, any psychotherapy in bipolar is helpful. It has been seen that if you are just passing some time with the patient, that itself helps by bipolar illness to a large extent. This, is, this includes psychoeducation, cognitive behavior therapy, mindfulness based cognitive behavior therapy, family therapy, all improve treatment outcome and if you don't have facilities you should try to develop these facilities so that they give some uh, boosting effect to your medicinal treatment otherwise you really deprive the person now coming to cognition and bipolar disorder drink Co uh, cognition and bipolar disorder is a topic of last decade, in fact. Before that, we never heard of cognition and bipolar. Uh, it has been seen that cognitive impairment between the episodes and even before the onset of illness. Illness that starts early has more impairment. Bipolar disorder, dementia, more like frontal uh, uh, FTD, uh, frontotemporal dementia, needs more investigation. This has been identified recently. You remember once we discussed and after that there were three reports that uh, there could be uh, a dementia type which 
uh, occurs after many episodes of uh, bipolar, which is actually a dementia type. Oh, welcome, welcome. Please come. So, what is the cognitive function of bipolar disorder? Uh, bipolar disorder is a mental illness. 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 We see that bipolar is not as benign, and this is very recent study which was uh, presented in uh, uh, international tenth uh, international conference of bipolar disorder, uh, two thousand thirteen, where memantine may improve cognition in bipolar disorder. In a randomized controlled parallel arm clinical trial of adjuvant memantine versus placebo in euthymic patients with bipolar disorder. Memantine improved several cognitive domains and also demonstrated increased hippocampal neuronal viability on imaging scans of brain. For a very long time, these cognitive deficits were interpreted as residual symptoms, but as it turns out, this is not the right answer and a lot of people actually continue to have cognitive problems. So, memantine may help if you are uh, finding that cognitive impairment is a major issue. Then coming to Uday's favorite topic, resilience and bipolar disorder. Uh, means here, when we are talking of increasing resilience, we, we want the adaptation to live with illness to increase. Harnessing resources to increase resilience are job, relationship, family, and friends. So. Throughout, you should try to maintain self-esteem, which helps uh, building resilience. Now, coming to list of prognostic indicators of treatment outcome. Suicidality, presence of personality disorder, quality of family and social support, substance use, history of severity of priority, uh, prior episodes, bipolar one type is most severe. Treatment onset, the sooner the better. Age of onset, the younger the more severe. Suicidal, suicidal risk must be continually monitored. Suicide completion rates in patients with bipolar disorder is quite high, 10 to 15 percent. Presence of suicidal or hom homicidal ideation intent or plan should be uh, noted investigated and access to means uh, this is very uh, interesting that uh, you know uh, we heard of farmer suicide recently a lot of newspaper writings uh, and uh, one very interesting study in Sri Lanka uh, one very interesting study in Sri Lanka Sri Lanka, uh, in, in Sri Lanka, psychiatrists suggested that most of the pharma suicide is with pesticide. So what a simple measure uh, that the government can do is to dilute the um, pesticides to 10 times. Because any pesticide, when you are giving uh, uh, for the farm, farmer, uh, farmers to use, you are giving in a concentrated bottle and the farmer had has to dilute it hundred times before he is uh, sp uh, means sprays it into the field. Yeah. So they suggested that if you just dilute it ten times, mm -hmm. so the person will not drink two bottles of it. So uh, the uh, death rate uh, diminishes remarkably. So that was very interesting. That a simple. Uh, intervention from the government, a simple measure from the government, changed the death rate to a large extent. Then uh, coming to psychiatric features like severe anxiety, we know that in the anxious state people usually commit suicide. So psychotic features and anxiety features have to be controlled early, which we often do the mistake that we see a patient, we give acetylopram, 
the person is uh, actually uh, anxious and you are increasing the agitation and anxiety and person commits suicide in the first week so the idea is to give something some pacifying agent which reduces the uh, anxiety level and as you know that substance abuse is a major cause of uh, suicide uh, suicide attempts it is in the drunk state or in the um, intoxicated state that people uh, commit suicide then history of previous attempts and family history or recent exposure to any neighbor committing suicide or any friend committing suicide that time you need to um, guide the person then another interesting study this is um, uh, this has come in psychological medicine uh, in june uh, 2013 this is uh, Frangu and Simons, I don't know if I'm pronouncing them well. Neuroimaging may offer new way to diagnose bipolar disorder. They did a study with MRI using advanced computational models in two studies correctly separated bipolar from healthy individuals with 72 to 73 percent Accuracy. I will not be able to tell you the details of the study, how they investigated, but these, these are advanced computational method with which normal and bipolar, they were distinguished up to 20, uh, 72 to 73 percent accuracy. This is comparable to that of many other tests used in medicine. So it is possible that in near future, MRI can be used to diagnose bipolar, uh, having a good evidence in support of your diagnosis. And brain scanning, as you know, is very acceptable to patients, as most patients consider it uh, a routine diagnostic test. You know that patients nag themselves that uh, doctors have a CT scan, MRI. Sir, submission next class. Then coming to systematic review of the evidence on the treatment of rapid cycling uh, disorder. This again came in bipolar disorder 2013 and uh, this is by uh, Farm Chulak and then Yatam, Yatam I know. So Yatam is with this study. They did a Medline search and they uh, took 25 papers, were selected from 206 papers. Only six randomized controlled trials specifically designed to study a rapid cycling population were found. And the observations that they made that rapid cycling patients perform worse in follow-up period. Lithium, we all, all know this, in fact, stating the obvious, in fact. Thank you, thank you. Lithium and anticonvulsants have comparable efficacy. There is inconclusive evidence of the comparative acute or prophylactic efficacy of the combination of anticonvulsants versus anticonvulsants monotherapy. So basically, you are not having any benefit in all these situations. Then aripiprazole and olanzapine appear promising for the maintenance of response of rapid cyclists. There might be an association between antidepressant use and the presence of rapid cycling. So what we are gaining from... Namaskar ma'am. Chalai Vaskar, sorry, that's the time you're sorry. So I'm going to put a presentation of Pilam. Nice, sorry. So, uh, what I'm saying that all these situations, you are saying that you are not having any advantage. Whether you are using anticonvulsant, whether you are using lithium, or you are using two anticonvulsants together, you are not having any advantage. But when you are using one uh, of these lithium or anticonvulsants and along with when you are using aripiprazole or olanzapine you are maintaining the patient on one of these then you might have some advantage so if you are getting rapid cycler it is always a good idea to combine 
a mood stabilizer, whichever you feel suitable, with one of these atypicals. So that will give you some benefit. Then there might be an association between antidepressant use and the presence of rapid cycling. Means antidepressant may be worsening the situation. That is accepted fact. Now coming to new recommendations for antidepressant uh, use in bipolar patients. This again was presented in 10th International Conference of Bipolar Disorder, 2013. There was a task force report presented by Dr. Vieta. Antidepressants have a questionable benefit risk and should only be used in certain cases of bipolar disorder. They should only be used in bipolar depression in patients with a history of good response in past to antidepressants and no history of rapid cycling or switches into mania right away. Avoid using antidepressants in mixed affective disorders with two or more concomitant core manic symptoms and in the presence of psychomotor hesitation. Psychomotor hesitation and some manic features in mixed affective is contraindication for uh, uh, use of antidepressants. Then recommendation, uh, that was for acute state, and then recommendation for maintenance treatment with antidepressants. Maintenance treatment with adjunctive antidepressants may be considered if a patient relapses into a depressive episode after stopping antidepressant therapy. Antidepressant monotherapy maintenance should be avoided in bipolar 1 disorder. Antidepressant monotherapy should be avoided in mixed affective state with two or more concomitant core manic symptoms. So there you need to have uh, mood stabilizer <laughs> or atypicals along with. Then selection of antidepressant um, the task force report, uh, ISBD, that uh, conference uh, task force report. Adjunctive treatment with serotonin, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors and tricyclic antidepressants be considered only after other antidepressants have been tried. If they are used, they should be closely monitored going to increased risk for switch or mood destabilization. Then coming to patient's choice, I mean, sometimes patients tell you what to do. This is uh, a lady, my patient, who uh, had a, a long history of use of lithium and uh, uh, almost uh, no use of typicals which also can give rise to uh, pigmentation and she had a uh, mm, severe kind of pigmentation this is, uh, she is a fair lady uh, but uh, the, her complexion has become like this and she went to three dermatologists and all dermatologists felt that pigmentation was due to lithium after uh, studying her uh, treatment chart each time lithium was stopped, her pigmentation started decreasing, but see, uh, and it was substituted with divalproex, and she had a manic attack. And lithium was done gradually, not that suddenly it was done, it was done gradually, taking all precautions. Even then, she had uh, manic times each time. So finally, she decided to continue with lithium and to leave with pigmentation. So uh, you'll have to respect that. This is another interesting patient, a very difficult patient for me. He's a doctor, a cardiologist, and uh, he has a severe kind of bipolar disorder, which uh, um, uh, before coming to me, he had a lot of difficulties continuing his work and then for the last three, four, or no, maybe five years, uh, he is <coughs> under my treatment. And uh, we, uh, I found that he was, uh, after, trying after trying many things, he was stable on lithium, lamotrigine, 
and Quisiapri. This is uh, on which what uh, he continued for quite some time in a stable manner. He was able to pursue his work. And then he uh, unfortunately developed aller allergy to lamotrigine. So he uh, was tried with many and uh, uh, then he uh, went into severe depression. He was tried with many combinations, nothing was working. And uh, finally, he responded to pramipexol and paroxetine. But after some time, he went into hy hypomania, became hypomanic. Uh, he, uh, the dose was scaled down. Uh, he scaled down the dose, but did not agree to stop the combination. Even though he was hypomanic, but the, the depression was so severe for him, he had to be off work for two, two months and he said that my practice will go into ruins so uh, somehow I, this combination is helping me and even if you started thinking of publishing in American Journal and this that but he uh, decreased the dose and he continued for uh, maybe 15-20 days <coughs> in a hypomanic state and then he settled down and he was doing well and uh, again doing well with this dose with lower dose of um, uh, this uh, combination pramipexol and uh, paroxetine. So as because he's a doctor and he this is a choice you cannot go even if you write something else he will not take. So you have to respect the patient's choice. Then why focus on bipolar depression? This is very important. I remember in one of the conference in Vedic village, Uday presented on this topic. Uh, uh, you'll understand later. Your thing will come later. Time depressed uh, is three times more than time manic. In any bipolar patient, depressive period is three times more. Depression is correlated with increased disability, suicidality, and medical comorbidities. It has been seen that cardiac events are twice or more in a depressive state uh, than in other uh, than otherwise. So uh, the many comorbidities and suicidality. These are more in depression. Number of depressive episodes correlates with degree of cognitive impairment while euthymic. Then antidepressants are not effective for bipolar patients and may increase switch into mania. This is what we presented uh, in the conference. And you cannot afford to miss bipolarity. That is the message. That if you are dealing with depression, if there is hint of bipolarity in the history, you cannot afford to miss that because identifying bipolar depression has become more important now. It starts at early age. It is difficult to treat. Adding mood stabilizer like lithium helps. That is the message that you have given there. Looking for history of mania, hypomania in case of depression is also important to prevent switch. So if you add mood stabilizer along with antidepressants, you may be uh, preventing, the, preventing the switch. Then options for bipolar depression prevention. These are lithium, anticonvulsants, um, which includes divalprox, carbamazepine, lamotrigine, second generation antipsychotics like quisiapine, ulanzapine plus fluoxetine combination, adjunctive psychotherapy, adjunctive medications like antidepressants, pramipexol, T3, modafinil, R modafinil, then methylfolate, N-acetylcysteine, and ECT and RTMS. I'd like to include one slide on lithium because this is my favorite molecule. I, um, uh, it is useful in all phases of bipolar disorder. This is one advantage of lithium. Then definite role in suicide prevention. Side effect profile is more of a media hype, I believe, that uh, lithium uh, monitoring is not 